of concerns about young people today. Uh, the first of which, the biggest of which, is their um, addiction to the electronic media. Their telephones are in their hands forever. It's denying them um, the ability to slow their lives down and to concentrate, to savor the moment. Instead, they're absorbed in their telephones, they're absorbed in their social media, and given up the chance to let their minds wander, to interact face to face with one another. Facebook is encouraging in them this obsession with themselves, which adolescents tend to suffer anyway, but it's just exacerbated by this compulsion to share every experience far and wide with a wide universe of, quote, friends. Kids are also, um, in my opinion, too fixated on creating opportunities for themselves with their education instead of absorbing themselves in learning for its own sake. They want to study the Battle of Waterloo in order to get a good grade on the test instead of studying the Battle of Waterloo because it's interesting or historically important. I would like to see kids return to more immediate investment in their learning and uh, set aside the electronic devices and, and read. In the mid-19th century, there was a very famous naturalist, a Swiss naturalist named Louis Agassiz, who was brought to Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and asked to teach anything he wanted. He decided to teach a class on zoology. And on the first day of class, he handed each of his students a fish. And all the students put the fish in front of them and waited for the lecture to begin, waited for the professor to say, read chapter 7. Only the professor stood there and said nothing. Finally, a student in the back raised his hand and said, Professor Agassiz, what should we do? And Agassiz said, look at your fish. And so a hundred obedient heads dipped down and they said, oh, there's my fish. Hello, fish. I know fish. I had a fish for dinner last night. And then they looked up and waited for the lecture to begin. But the lecture did not begin. Agassiz just sat there, staring at the students. Finally, that same impatient student said, Professor Agassiz, now what should we do? And he said, again, look at your fish. And so they looked at their fish a second time. And in the second time of looking at their fish, they noticed that the fish had scales running along the length of its body. They noticed that it had fins on the top and on the sides and on the bottom. They hadn't noticed that in the first glimpse. In fact, they even noticed that the fins were just membranes stretched between spines. They hadn't noticed that in the first glimpse. One young man started making a list of all the things he noticed in the fish sitting before him. And the guy sitting next to him said, oh, we're supposed to be making a list. OK. And so he started writing his own list, too. The third guy said, you know what? I'm not a list maker. I'm a picture drawer. I'm an artist. And so he started sketching his fish. And both the list maker and the picture drawer started noticing things in the fish that they wouldn't have were they not making a list or drawing the picture. Across the room, another guy said, I'm not a picture drawer, I'm not a list maker, I'm a hands-on kind of guy. So he picked up his fish, he held it in his hand, and looked at it in the face and said, hello fish, it's me. And he noticed in looking at the fish that there was an eye on the right and an eye on the left, and that there was, uh, the mouth was centered between those two eyes. And he turned to say, hey look, the fish has an eye on the right and the left and a mouth in the middle. He turned to say that to the boy sitting next to him, and he realized, wait, that boy has an eye on the right and an eye on the left and a mouth in the middle. That both the fish and the young man were bilaterally symmetrical. They were the same on the right as they were on the left. He made a connection. And all over the room, minds were igniting. Now, Professor Agassiz down at the front had said nothing but, look at your fish. And of course, he's being very eloquent. He's saying to them, look, your learning is your responsibility. Uh, in coming here to Italy, I, to Italy, I'm realizing it's a very small world in which we live, that we're much more similar than we are different. And to obsess about our difference is silly and counterproductive. Young people want to learn. Young people want to grow. One, young people want to be fulfilled. Their parents want to see the same thing happen. And that doesn't matter where one lives. Parents love their children. They want to see them lead healthy, productive lives. The difference is in how that's approached. In the United States, Young people are very competitive about achieving great things. They want all the benefits of the culture. They want material reward. And they see the best way to achieve that is to get good grades in school. And with those good grades to impress adults who will create for them opportunity. 
it's competitive to get into college and kids in the United States want to go to the best colleges and so they're falling all over one another to get those few admission slips. In Europe they're facing different challenges. There aren't enough opportunities in Europe. Uh, I learned just last night that many Italian kids are enjoying a public education and taking that elsewhere. I'd like to see that change. Um, people should find their satisfactions close to home. They should keep a wide view, but find their satisfactions close at hand. Um, I think in both countries, I'd like to see young people um, more respectful of older people, not just their parents, but their grandparents as well. I'd like to see families sit together at dinner and just talk. Uh, young people are too much among themselves. I'd like to see them integrate with m many ages and learn from one another. We're all in this together, after all. There are far more important things than the reward at the end of an endeavor. We go fishing, to get back to fish, we go fishing not to have the fish, we go fishing for the whole process. We uh, ski not to stand at the bottom of the hill, we ski because we enjoy getting to the bottom of the hill. It's the journey that matters, not the destination. And I think that's universal. We read a book for the pleasures of reading the book, not because we want to get to the end of the page. Um, we should approach studying in school that way. We should approach our own careers that way. Work not for the paycheck. Work because you love and believe in the work. And good results will surely follow. And that doesn't matter where one lives. I think that's true everywhere. My advice to a kid who wants to change the world is believe in yourself, trust your own ideas, respect and draw from the wisdom of other people, work hard, work smart, be optimistic, Love everything you love, love everyone you love with all your might, and then good luck to you.